We started with the maximization problem in the previous video. Now we are going to look at the next step where we're going to find the feasibility zone for this problem. Now when we look at finding the feasibility zone, we have to concentrate on the different steps. And first of all, we have to draw the constraints. We have to take the constraints and express them as an equality. So we can draw the constraints as the equality on the X and Y plane, and we can find the upper and the lower borders of the feasibility zone. When we identify the line, we have to find out which side is basically part of the constraint, which side complies with the constraint. Now, it can be to the left, to the right, above or below, but we have to select one point in one of the zones because the line cuts the plane in two parts so we have to take one point below above to the left or to the right and the most convenient por point that we can take is zero zero so we can in fact verify the inequality by using the origin to verify which side of the constraint which side of the plane below or above the line is in fact compliant with the constraint. Now, when we uh, look at some other ca cases when a line would be passing through the origin, we just have to find another point and do the calculations. We can take 1, 1 or minus 1, minus 1, but 1, 1 is more logical since we only consider the positive numbers. So basically, when we are looking at those elements, we have to see what are those uh, different zones, which zone complies with the constraint. Now, it's very important if you select a number, the number should not be on the line itself because it doesn't give any um, conclusion. Let's have a look at the constraints that we had before. So we found basically six equations which represent the constraints. We have 4.5x plus 6y smaller or equal, equal than 1440. 1.5x plus 3y smaller or equal than 600. x smaller or equal than 300. y smaller or equal than 175. And then we have the non-negativity conditions where x and y have to be larger than zero. Now, what we have to do now is to find the intersections with the x and the y axis of those different lines. We have to be able to draw the line. So, when we look at the first equation, 4.5x plus 6y is equal to 1440, we have to find first the x-intercept and then the y-intercept. When we consider the x-intercept, it means it's the point where y is equal to zero. When we replace that in the equation, we find that 4.5x plus 6 times 0 is 1440, which leads to 4.5x is 1440. In order to obtain x, we have to divide 1440 by 4.5, and we find the coordinate, the x coordinate, to be 320, and the intercept is 320, 0. Now we do the same for the y-intercept. For the y-intercept, we have x equal to 0, which means we have in the equation 4.5 times 0 plus 6 times y is equal to 1440, which gives us 6y is equal to 1440, and the y-coordinate is 1440 divided by 6, which is 240. And we find the y-intercept in the coordinates 0 and 240. Now we do the same thing for the other equation, uh, the other equation where we have x and y combined. So we have 1.5x plus 3y smaller or equal than 600. For the x-intercept, we do the same calculations as before, and we find the intercept to be at the point 400. For the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0, 
When we complete the calculations, we find that the intercept is found in the point 0 and 200. For the other points, well, the other uh, inequalities that we have, we have those four equations, x smaller or equal than 300. Well, we can find it very easily. It's a vertical line going through x equal to 300. Y smaller or equal than 175 is a horizontal line going through 175. And the two non-negativity conditions are placed on the two axes. So basically, we have all horizontal lines, one with y smaller or equal than 175 and y larger or equal than 0, and two vertical lines, x smaller or equal than 300 and x larger or equal than 0. It is clear that we don't have to calculate anything for these lines. But let's have a look how it goes in the graph, how we go step by step. So we have here the graph that I created for this exercise. We have the first inequality and we know that the line for xy plus 6y has two intercepts. The x-intercept is 320 and 0. So we find that on the x-axis. The y-intercept is 0 and 240, which we find on the y-axis. And we can draw the line between those two and identify the zone of the plane that complies with this constraint. And that's when we put 0, 0 in there, we find this is in fact the zone below. So basically I draw the zone which is not compliant with the constraint. We continue with the next equation, which is 1.5x plus 3y smaller or equal than 600. We have the first intercept at 400 and 0, and the second intercept at 0 and 200. I repeat the same principle. I draw the line through these two points, and now I determine the part of the plane which is compliant with the constraint. When we pl plug 0 in there, 0 plus 0 is smaller or equal than 600, so we also draw the part which is in fact on the other side, and we find a number, a, a better approximation of the feasibility zone. Now we put there the vertical line x equals to 300, and the left side is in fact compliant with the condition, with the constraint. We draw the horizontal line y is equal to 175. We draw that line and we find that the part below the line is compliant with the constraint. So we draw that line also. We already see that our feasibility zone, the white zone, is already limited, but we still have to add the non negative conditions. So basically we have those two zones which are also excluded and basically what we find here is the feasibility zone. So this is the next step that we finished. Based on the equations I've drawn the feasibility zone, I have identified the feasibility zone. In the next steps I will draw the objective function and move it, let's say, parallel lines to the objective function as far away as possible from the origin. We also then can identify the different corner points, we can calculate them, and then we can calculate the objective function in the different corner points and identify the point with the highest profit. So this was the first part of the exercise. We have identified the equations or sorry, it's the second part of the exercise. We already identified the equations. We use the equations, we use the constraints to draw the feasibility zone. And in the next session, we will be looking at finding the optimal solution by using a graphical solution, a graphical method, and by doing it by calculations. You're doing a great job, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you, and bye-bye.